to Morgan. Good morning. I was sitting here for quite some time um, in front of the camera contemplating um, what I should share and um, what I should leave out. <clears throat> that um, disclaimer, I'm not sharing this part of my testimony for sympathy. Um, uh, I actually, if someone gives me sympathy, it, it kind of um, makes me feel a little weird. <laughs> you know, that... Um, because I didn't ask for it, you know. Um, I'm just a weird person, I guess. Uh, I've always, uh, for the most part, uh, have hidden my... Um, my personal feelings on a lot of different things and when I say hidden it means I don't I don't have friends that I talk to or confide in you know I don't have a close relationship with my mother I feel bad for my mom that she's glued to the TV and she's been like that since always you know, you can bet if I was to call my mother up, the TV would be on. So even though she's not even watching it, she's she has it on. I'm um, watching the same programs. Yeah, programs. Being programmed. Um, so I was pretty good about finding a way to be okay with situations and moving forward, pushing forward, pushing forward. I'm not saying that I resolved and I was okay in my heart with different situations. I just, I was a fighter. The Lord made me that way. And, um, and not a fighter as in I'm, I'm being argumentative and and pushing back actually i learned a while ago that it's best to let it be that um it's better for myself that it's less heartache for myself and um uh i just I wasn't into drama or stirring up poop. <laughs> um, I would have said the S word, but we'll just say poop. Um, so this part of my testimony as of late, I'm sharing it again not to gather sympathy, okay? I'm sharing it because I want to give others strength by planting a good seed that you should be cleaving to the Lord Jesus Christ right now because He is the only one, the only one that can help you, okay? You know, you may have friends or acquaintances that can listen to your concerns and worries, but there's no way that anyone else here can understand you and know you like the Lord Jesus Christ. So, I have three children. Those, those of you who are new to my channel. Um, I was married twice and divorced twice. And before anyone has a religious spirit over that, um, if you don't understand 
the circumstances, then I'd refrain from having an opinion over it. That um, if there is any amount of abuse or um, it doesn't necessarily have to be physical abuse if if it's doing more harm to your children to stay together than it is to part ways you know who are you thinking of so again every situation is different so um, I'm not telling people to get a divorce I'm just saying that it was a choice in my situation and my circumstances that I'm not going to share that um, we went our separate ways so my first marriage I had two girls we were foolish we were very young uh, still blessings uh, my oldest daughter is 22 and um, and my middle daughter is she'll be 18 on November 19th it's crazy to think that I have two young ladies because um, it seems not so long ago they were so little so my second marriage I thought I was being a little wiser because I was in my 30s and I thought I knew him but we we really rushed into the relationship um, and we had an we had a blessing I had my son he'll be nine the end of January which is an awesome age I love seven, eight, nine. <laughs> it's before they become a little too independent, a little too mouthy, a little too overconfident about everything, you know, and they're they're still childlike. So uh yes, my situation with my son well let me rewind um, when I had my girls I was a single mother I was working full-time and I was doing it all by myself essentially again I didn't have any help from my mother um, from any family members um, it was just me it was just me and my girls um, for the most part um, and their dad had them every other weekend so essentially we lived in a mobile home in a, in a single wide trailer in a trailer park in in New Hampshire and every day I would wake up early shower get their lunches bring them to their before school program in the daycare and go to work come back pick them up go grocery shopping bring them home do laundry cook dinner helped uh, my daughter with her homework and repeat the following day um, and this isn't it's you know if you think about all the doctor's appointments and you know meetings with the teachers and just different things on top of all of that yes I did it all myself I don't want any rewards for it it was I was just being a mom and I didn't feel like I was being a great mom because I was tired all the time where a lot of times I would plop my girls in front of the TV pop in a movie and crash on the couch because I was just so exhausted I had um, anemia which would make you uh, fatigued a lot and um, when you're tired and you feel overworked you don't have a lot of patience so I used to yell at my girls a lot a lot more than you know I regret I have a lot of regrets so um, 
So now that I'm older, I'll be 44 this November, um, and I have new eyes and a new heart that the Lord gave me. I became born again December 7th, 2018. Uh, you would think that um, it would be different raising uh, our son. I'm not yell. I don't yell at our son. <laughs> but um, when we got a divorce, uh, my ex-husband wouldn't agree to the divorce unless um, I agreed to the arrangement of how many days he has him and how many days I have him. Um, I mean, I wanted to do one week on, one week off, something like that. But then he was like, our son at the time was three and a half and he was like, and he wasn't going to do that. And I didn't want to do that to him either. I wasn't trying to take his son away from him. So I agreed he wanted two days on, two days off. And... My ex-husband's pretty clever because he knew, he knew that I wasn't going to follow through with that because our son being three and a half, I was not going to, you know, toss him around like that. And my ex-husband knew that. He knew that um, I didn't think that was right. I didn't think it was cool. So from the very get-go, you know, after our divorce, I drove to his house, the house that our son uh, was born in and grew up in. Um, he was comfortable there. He was stable there. So every day, and it was practically every day unless he went to go see his mom, um, my ex-husband going to see his mother. Every day before work, I would go see our son. And because I only saw him for two or three hours a day, um, I spoiled him with material things. I always had a toy for him um, when he was really little. Um, and as he got older, he got really into Lego, so I always would buy these, you know, inexpensive, you know, nine, ten, under twenty dollar sets of Legos. So he has, I can't even tell you how much money I've spent on Legos. <laughs> And I'm not saying that spoiling your child with material things is cool. It's not, but... <clears throat> um, I wanted him to know that I loved him. Excuse me. So, fast forward. We moved here um, in Western Mass. Um, if you don't know my arrangement, I live in this beautiful house, this small house. It's not mine, you know, um, that my, my son's dad, my ex-husband, my second ex-husband's building a house in two towns over and um, he wanted me to move out here with them. And we had bought this piece of property while we were married. We were gonna, we were gonna build our house here um, before, before we got a divorce. You know, that was what our plan was because we got a really good deal on the land here, 10 acres, um, because the people were just selling what they owed on it because they were from upper state New York, because New York is about an hour away. And um, um, he was they were going to build their house here, but they wound up, 
you know, you wound up not taking the job, so they just wanted to sell the, the, the land. So I think he got it for $26,000, just what they owed on it, because they didn't want to pay taxes, continue to pay taxes on it, and such. So, um, so my ex-husband built this house for me. Um, this was after we were divorced because he wanted me to move out here. Um, so it's my house, but it's not my house. The house is not in my name, but I can do whatever I want to it um, and the outside. I don't do much to it. I just live here. Um, I pay him each month. Um, not necessarily rent, but, you know, I pay him for the utilities and, and taxes and stuff. So it's just kind of a break even. He's not making any money off of me living here. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I live in this really nice house, two towns over. I work part time. Um, and I drive to their location to see our son because he's building his house. Uh, it's, he's trying to get it finished before the end of December. And, um, the reason why I'm sharing this, this testimony with you is that it might seem like what uh, what a wonderful life I have and I'm not complaining I do have a comfortable life but it's not all pretty you know um, my 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 second ex-husband believes that COVID is real and he's convinced our eight-year-old son that it's very real. And since April, I haven't been able to hug our son. That, um, yeah, so just imagine uh, being able to watch your child watch your child like through a glass window because that's what it's like I'm still grateful I still you know we we play outside we laugh um, I'm, I still am thankful to the Lord Jesus Christ that my son's okay my children are okay you know, I'm not trying to be selfish, like, oh, I can't hug my child, but um, he used to allow me to kiss his cheeks. Um, I would say in French, pouce du jour is cheek break. <laughs> and he would know what it means, like we would play Legos, and I would say pouce du jour, and he'd, <laughs> he'd, just give me, he'd just lean over and stick his big cheek out. Because he had, he still has big cheeks. You know, he's 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 so slender, but he still has his cheeks, and I thank the Lord for that too. And um, so, yes, it's very hard to to love your children from afar, and I'm sure that there are other people who are the Lord God's children. Maybe you have grown children. Maybe you have grandchildren. And maybe they believe that COVID is real and you're doing the same thing. You're, you're loving them from afar as if you were behind a glass window. Being able to watch them, but not being able to hold them and love them the way you want to, which is hard.
it's a hard walk but again I'm sharing this testimony because I want to I want you to gather strength in the Lord that I've cried I've I've driven away quite often frustrated and sad I'm not mad because I know this is a spiritual warfare I know that, you know, Ephesians 6, 12, that other people are being run by other spirits. If you don't have his Holy Spirit, you're being run by other spirits. So I know this, so I don't get mad, but I do get frustrated. And the recent thing that my, my son's um, dad has done is... Um, he said that, because uh, I had asked him, I don't know how we got onto the topic, but I asked him about, you know, coming into their house, you know, because it started to get cold, it's starting to get cold here. It's like 50, 48, 50 degrees here. It's rainy today again. And I was like, well, you know, during the winter months, you're going to allow me in your house, right? And he's like, well, you know, the greenhouse might be warm enough. Now, the way he's building his house is he has two greenhouses on either side attached to the house. That's how he's building the house. And um, I got really upset. I really did because it's like... I drive 22 miles one way, 44 miles round trip to go see our son. And um, and I, I think I'm being very considerate and thoughtful. And I, I felt like this is the way I'm being treated. You're going to make me only visit him in the greenhouse I won't be allowed in your house because you believe this this virus is real and I got really upset I felt like I was being treated like a dog being put out of the house and um, I vented a lot to our father about it that you know he's he's convinced our son that the virus is real they're under strong delusions second thessalonians 2 10 and 11 and i have to be the bigger person and understand it or find a way to understand it and again i'm sharing this testimony with you because i want you to gather strength in the lord because the only way I'm able to find peace about it all, about my delusional family, <laughs> is through our Father. There is a reason why it's playing out the way it is. It's not random. It's not, you know, there is a reason. And our Father you know, the truth will come out of why. You know, part of this COVID thing that the Lord's allowing to happen is because He is separating us from others. You know, His Word says that families will be divided. Again, there's a reason why. I, might, I may not understand it fully, and you may not either. But to have faith and trust in the Lord that it's all going to work out in the end. That these hardships are not for no reason at all. That your, you know, the pain that you're going through, the long suffering that you're going through, is for a purpose, a greater purpose, His purpose. So again, it may be hard, but the reason why I'm sharing this is because I want you to know you're not the only one. 
it's not I know it feels like am I the only one in the world it seems like everybody else you know with their walk with the Lord just seems so happy and just they're like praise the Lord <laughs> and you're like <laughs> am I doing something wrong <laughs> I have more sad days than than not and it doesn't mean I'm not grateful it doesn't mean that I don't appreciate it's like I thank the Lord that I have a roof over my head every time I put food before me that I'm warm that I'm dry I pray for the homeless often asking the Lord to keep them safe giving them peace in their mind and their heart and filling up their bellies. So, again, um, don't have sympathy for me. I don't need sympathy. What I need you to do is to cleave to the Lord and trust in the Lord that He will give you peace and and understanding enough for you to endure, for you to endure that your family may be delusional, they may be arguing with you, they're lost, they're absolutely lost, and the best thing you can do for others, even if it's really hard sometimes, is to just love them, love them. Just love them, even if it has to be from afar, even if it's that you just pray for them all the time, that our Father has mercy upon them. Okay? I hope I planted a good seed. I love you, and God bless.